What's up guys? Welcome to another video. Uh, today we're going to be talking about if-else statements um, and how to use them with JavaScript and pretty much programming in general because they're, they're not just for JavaScript but you know it's one of those basic programming things. So if-else statements guys they use booleans which we talked about before if you've been taking this course which are true false and you combine true and false stuff that's true and false or booleans with an if else statement and that's how you make decisions in programming so it's basically like the foundation of of programming and how to build applications or web pages or web apps that can make decisions based off of the users like behavior okay so this is just like we'll go down here um this this is like an example of what we're going to be learning here an if else statement so you have if the condition that you're checking for and we'll get into that and then the code that you want to run if something's happening and then else and then so if this doesn't happen you can put the keyword else and then run a different piece of code to do something else on your web page or web application so this this these are used again whenever you're you're making decisions in code so for example, like let's just say you were logging into a website or something that you had like an account on, like up here how it says sign up or log in. Maybe when you logged in, it'll say like good day or good morning and then your name, like how are you? And then if it's nighttime, it'll say good evening or, you know, um, how was your night? Something like that will pop up on your screen. And the the web page or the web application would know that because in the background they would have an if else statement that checks what uh, would check like what time it was from your computer and then based off of that it would give you like you know good morning or good evening or something like that so um anyway it's enough of that i just wanted to like show you a little bit of a example of what we're talking about here so let's go into our code i'm going to go into my javascript course files that i've been working on and i'm going to go create a new file and i'll say 10 dash if else.html I'm going to go ahead and just get my boilerplate code up here and then we'll write all of our code in some script tags all right and then we'll just paste in a couple of notes here and then so we have um, let's have a couple of notes here that I want to go over and I'm just going to paste in my HTML so it says in programming, a boolean is a data type that equals true or false. Booleans are used in if else statements to make decisions in code. This is how interactive games, web applications, and web pages are made. Okay? So same thing. If you're playing like a, a video game on the web browser, that thing is full of if else statements and booleans for like to make stuff happen when the user clicks a button or does something. So let's just I'm we'll let's just go over booleans really quick again, like a little refresher. I, I went over them briefly in another video, but again, booleans are just true or false. So this would be a true boolean. Oops. Um, we can just, we we just say uh, like a variable like let um has hair for example. Does somebody have hair? And you can set that to true. It's just like a random thing. <laughs> Then we can console.log has hair and save it. And then let's go ahead and minimize this page a little bit. And I'm gonna I'm gonna open up my live server and we'll log stuff with the console and like we like we've been doing and just check our code that way. So I'm gonna open up the document here. Let me just make a title. Say JS if else statements and open up my console I'm gonna left click and hit inspect go to console and there we go so we said let has here we set it to a boolean of true and then we logged it out and then it's just showing us in the console like yes that's true uh we can do another one that's false so let's go down and say false and we'll say let is a millionaire okay and that'll be equal to false unfortunately i'm not a millionaire yet <laughs> so let's console.log that out is a millionaire false okay 
So again, you can just set stuff to true or false by default. That's one way to use Booleans, but how we're going to use them again is we're going to put them in an if else statement, and that's going to determine what's true and false and then what happens from there in our code, okay? So I'm going to go down now, and with our if else statements, we use things called comparison operators, and that's how we compare stuff and make decisions in our code. So we're going to cover that next before we write an if else statement. So I'm going to go down here. And I'm just going to copy some notes down in, in my JavaScript that I have on my other screen. All right. And this is about comparison operators. Okay. And again, you can copy this down in your, you should be coding along with me and you can copy this down in your own notes just so you, that helps you remember. Uh, but it says comparison operators are used in JavaScript to write if, if else statements that make decisions. And then if you remember like math class, when you took math in school, the, uh, some of these symbols are going to look um, familiar to you. So, again, we have the greater than symbol, less than, equal to, and then we have triple equals, which is the strict equal, and I'll talk about what that means more later. Then we have not equal to, an equal and an exclamation, the strict not equal to, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to. So those are the comparison operators that we use. And I'll sh we'll we'll get into that you know practically we'll we'll write FL statements that use those, but just know that those are comparison operators, and that's what we use in FL statements. Okay, so let's write our first FL statement. So just write FL statement here, and let's write a let's pretend like we're writing some kind of FL statement for like an online casino where you can gamble online. Okay, so. Let's write, I'll put check if a person can enter the casino because online gambling is getting huge in the United States. They're like, they're legally legalizing all sports betting and it's only a matter of time before we have a bunch of online casinos probably, right? So this is kind of like a practical thing that you might be doing in the future if you work for a company that has an online casino. So let's make a variable here. We'll say let age and we'll put it equal to 19 and then well let's do an if else statement to see if the person's old enough to go in the casino so the legal gambling age in the united states is 21 you got to be 21 to end, be able to be in the casino gambling area so we can actually write an if else statement that checks for that so we can say if and then parentheses and we can say age, our variable age. So if age is less than 21, or sorry, less than, that's greater than, less than 21, let's log to the console. Say console.log. Um, and then we'll say, say sorry. You are too young to play in the casino. Oops. Okay. And then we saved. And then you can see here immediately our if else statement worked right away because it checked age and it said, huh, is age less than 21? And it was. So since that was true, remember Boolean, since that was true, it ran our code. Sorry, you are too young to enter the casino. But we can do else, so if else, right? So let's do else, and we can say console.log, and then we'll just say, we'll say, yay, you can gamble in the casino. And then I'll put a little, let's put a little slot machine. <laughs> and then we'll put a little exclamation here. Save it. Okay. And how I did that, guys, I'm on Mac, and it's Control and Command Space Bar, and that opens up your emojis. If you're on a Mac, you can do that. If not, you can probably do it on Windows somehow. I just, I'm not sure how, but you can kind of have fun with that. <laughs> but, all right, so now we have our code here. It says, hey, we're too young, age is 19. Let's change it to 21, see what happens. So 21 and save. 
Yay, you can gamble at the casino. So see how that works? It's just checking the age. 23, we can still gamble. Let's go to 20. Nope, too young. Okay. So yeah, that's our first little if else statement. Nothing too complicated. Um, let's do another one. So let's go below here. We'll say if else statement two, number two, say number two. All right. And then let's let's write an if else statement that checks if a user has a paid subscription to a website because that's a really common thing that you'll that's actually like practical that you'll you would be doing in real life because you know there's a ton of websites out there that have paid subscriptions right so let's say let paid sub is equal to true and then we'll just go below it and we'll write an if else statement we'll say if paid sub triple equals true so that's the strict version remember i had that up there it said strict so if that is equal to true then we're going to console dot log and we'll say you have access to all premium content and then we saved and of course it checked already if it was true and look at that you have access to all it already checked it right and then we can say else and then we can do console dot log and so if they're not a member we can show them a message that says please upgrade to view premium content so again, if we change this to false, look at that. You save right there. Please agree to view premium content, okay? So we'll change it back to true. I wanna show you one more thing, guys, really quick. For something as simple as this, you actually don't really need this equals true. You can literally just put if paid sub. And in the background, JavaScript knows that um, by default, you're checking if this is true. So if I save this, nothing happened. It still works. You can actually skip that. So like if if you write if and then something like a like a variable, again, JavaScript automatically knows, hey, this guy's checking if this is true. So that's just a little don't let that confuse you, but that is a thing. I just want to kind of go over that. I'll put that back there. Don't worry if you're just a beginner and that confuses you. But that is a thing. Okay. Um so now let's do a challenge. I want to do a challenge, so I'm going to copy and paste my challenge down here, and this is for you. This is where I want you to pause the video and try this yourself, and use the examples we just did, right? But it says, challenge if else statement. I want you to create an if else statement that checks if a user is logged on. If the user is logged on, create a console log that says, welcome back user. If the user is not logged on, create a console log that says, access denied. And then I have a hint for you. Create a variable named user logged in and use a boolean to set its value to true or false. Don't forget to use the else keyword for your else, you know, your if else statement. Okay. So try this on your own. Look at our examples if you need, if you don't remember the syntax. But go ahead and pause the video now and see if you can get through this. And if not, that's okay. We'll go through it in a second. All right. Good luck. All right. So we're going to try this now. Hopefully you got that. If you didn't, that's completely fine. So let's make a variable. This time I'll, I'll just use a const because why not? We'll say const and we'll call it user logged in. And mine, I'm going to equal it to false. You could do true or false. For this first example, I'll say it's false or not logged in. Um, and then let's go. Let's say if user logged in equal to true console dot log and we'll say welcome back user okay and we save nothing's happened probably because this is false right but let's do let's do where else and we'll do console dot log 
We'll say access denied. Save. And I accidentally respell, misspelled console. There we go. <laughs> access denied. So we got denied because the user's not logged in. We set it to false. Again, change it to true. And now it says welcome back user. And then again, remember I showed you up here that little trick? We don't even need to really put true in this case because it's like really obvious what we're checking for. JavaScript already knows. Save it and look at that. So it says welcome back user. Okay. All right, guys. So those were if else statements. And then I also want to touch on else if because there's also a keyword called else if that you can add multiple things multiple you can check for like multiple different things by using else if so let's make a comment down here say else if and I'll show you what I mean if that's confusing so let's check the time of day we kind of saw that in the example before in the beginning of the video um, so I'm gonna say let make a variable let time of day and I'm going to say, well, let's go off of military time, which is like, what is it, like 0 or 1 to 24, right, for 24 hours, I think. So let's say the time of day is 8 right now. So that would be 8 a.m. And let's say if time of day is less than or equal to 11, so it would be 11 a.m. Uh, let's console.log. Good morning, because that would be 0 to 11 a.m., right? So that would be morning, 12 a.m. to 11 a.m., right? And then we'll say, check this out, else if, okay, else if, you don't, you, you don't always have to just do else. You can do else and then if again and check something else. Else if time of day is less than 15 so 15 would be like 3 or 4 o'clock. Let's see. Military time, 15. 3 p.m. So let's actually make this 16 to make it like 4 o'clock. When's the cutoff for like night? I'll say it. Well, let's say 16. I'll say like 5 p.m. is pretty much nighttime, right? After five, five and after, you'd say, like, good evening, probably. <laughs> we'll go with that. So we'll say, else if uh, time of day less than 16. And we'll say console.log good afternoon. And then we'll finish with an else. So you always want to close out with just an else statement. And so it's, if it's not any of these things, we can say good evening because by default it should be night if it's none of those things, right? And we'll try it. So say console.log, good evening. Save. Okay, so let's, let's test this out. So 8 is 8 a.m., so it says good morning here. Let's see if we change it to 11. Is it still morning? Like it should be. Yes, it is. How about 12? We should get good afternoon. We did. How about 16, which is 4 p.m.? Good evening. Okay. So if time of day is less than 16, how about 15? Good afternoon. So that's 3 p.m. So let's say less than 17 instead of 16. Now let's try 16. Yeah. I like I think that's better for our times. Let's say eighteen. So nighttime. Good evening. Say twenty four. Yep. So I don't know if I'm getting that right, guys. I'm not a military guy, but you get the idea. We're checking the time of day. And again, guys, this is like the simple stuff that's like implemented on the behind the scenes. Of like whenever you go to web pages, if you ever wonder to yourself, like how do they know what's morning? Like how do they know what time it is? Like it's they're using an if else statement and they're checking the time on your computer. Okay. So anyway, yeah, just know that you can also use else if it doesn't always have to just be if and then else. Like you can have a giant if else statement here and have like thirty else ifs and then an else to finally end it. 
that's a thing. Um, yeah. So now let's go through, and I want to show you, I think, one more thing called logical operators. It's like a, it's another little wrinkle thrown in that you can also use with uh, if else statements and booleans and all, the, all that good stuff. So logical operators, again, you copy these notes down if you want. So logical operators allow you to check for multiple conditions within an if else statement. So multiple, and I'll show you what that means. This has a layer of complexity to your applications and makes it more robust when it comes to decision making. So in other words, you can check and, you can say and, so you can, in your if else statement, when you say if, you can say time of day, you can check that and then put and in here. And, and then put something else. So if it's, um, what is that? Less than or equal to level and, and 11 and time of day is greater than 12. Then do this. Okay, that's just an example. That's what I'm talking about. Check for multiple things in one single parentheses. So we have and, which is just two and signs, or, which is two pipes, or not, which is the exclamation. So let me just give you, let's do, we'll do some examples using logical operators. So let's say logical operator if else statement, oops, statement. <laughs> All right, so let's say let fave color, favorite color equals black and then we can say let likes steak okay let likes steak and we'll say it will equal to true so this fictional person which is me because that those are this is kind of about me if my favorite color is black and I like steak then we'll do something so this is going to use the AND operator. So check this out. We'll say if parentheses fave color triple equals black. Oops. And like steak. And now, guys, remember I can put e triple equals true or I can just put like steak and it's still going to do the same thing. And then I'll say console.log. Say welcome back, Nick. That's me. Uh, the practical web dev name is Nick. Else console.log. Um, we can say, we'll just be like unknown user. <laughs> say like we don't know who this is it's not nick so remember we used and so and means both of these things have to equal true for this code to run since we did and okay so i could put this to false and now one of them's not true and now look what happened when i saved unknown user both of these things have to be true for this to run okay so let's go back to true here. So remember that, guys. And every you, if you use the and logical operator to check for multiple things, just know that you're marrying these two things together, and they both have to be true. And if one's not true, it's the code's not going to run, right? So and so we can even put that here. Both things must, or we'll say conditions. Let's be professional. Both conditions must be true and then for or one of the conditions because it's or right must just like plain english when we say that in english we say do you want this or that right so let's do one with or now so let's say or logical operator 
I'm going to put the pipe. So to get the pipes, guys, it's shift. And then the pipe is with the forward slash on your computer. So it should be like under your backspace or delete button area, I think. Or it's over the enter button. Look in that area. Hold shift and then just hit two pipes. All right. So let's go ahead and we'll make our OR operator um, example. So let's just make a couple variables like we've been doing. Let's do, we'll, we'll use const. Say A equals 3. Okay. And then we'll make another one. Say const B equals 4. And then we'll go down here and we'll say if A is greater than 1 or double pipes, B is greater than 1, then go ahead and console.log and we'll say, we'll say yay at least I'll oh, see yay one number is oops if I can type say one number is greater than one if not we'll put else and we'll say console dot log we'll say both numbers are too small. Okay. So let's see what happened in our console here. And we have, if you look at our code here from line 131, which is right here, it said uh, our code ran, our if else statement ran, it said, yay, one number is greater than one. So that's because at least one of these is greater than one. So again, since this is or, only one of these has to be true to roll, to, uh, to run. So we could change this to four and four. And now both numbers are too small because now we're saying is A and B both greater than four and we're not. They're not. We could say if we change this to greater than or equal to and saved. And that changes it to true. So yay, one number is greater than one because we put the equal greater than or equal to sign here. Remember, you can also do that. And this is equal to four. Okay. Or we can simply just say three. We could just do three and three and see what that does and get rid of the equal to sign. And it's still, still going to work because at least B is greater. But if we, let's say we made B um, 2, both numbers are too small because neither one is true. So remember, or at least one thing has to be true for the code to run as true, okay? So um, we're going to do one more challenge here. And it's going to involve you creating an if else statement with a logical operator. So I'm going to copy and paste the challenge. And you can paste this in your code or just read it to yourself. So um, we had if else we're gonna do a challenge if else statement with logical operators we're gonna pre uh, for a pretend job application. So this might be code that would run on like Indeed.com or any other job website that you can think of as a way to like filter out candidates when they apply for jobs. So this is a very real world thing. Whenever you're like applying for jobs online, there's there's some kind of logic in the background that is going to filter your uh, your application out pretty much right away when you apply, even if, you know, to decide if they should even look at it or not. So create an if else statement with two variables. We're going to have one that says called const knows HTML. We're going to set that to true. And then we're going to have a second variable, and it's going to be const knows XHTML. We're going to also put that to true. And then we're going to write an if else statement that, says if either variable is true console.log you may apply for the job else if they are both false uh, console.log sorry you are not qualified for the position okay so think of what logical operator that you could use that we just learned about that would make this code run correctly so again I'll give you a hint it looks like 
you'd want to use a logical operator that made sure that at least one of these is true. Not necessarily both, but at least one. So go ahead. I'm going to pause the video or pause the video here and try this out for yourself. And if you don't get it, that's all right. We'll do it together here in just a second. All right. Good luck. All right, so hopefully that wasn't too bad. Um, let's go ahead and do this together. So let's make our variables. I'll say const knows HTML equals true. Now we'll say const knows XHTML. We'll set that to true. And then we'll say if knows HTML or, remember, because we want at least one of these to be true for the application you go through, so we're going to use the, the two pipes, which is the or logical operator, and then we'll put nose xhtml, and remember, I'm not, I'm not doing the equals true here, because by default, this is checking if either one is true, so you, we don't need to do all that again, um, I'm just going to write the shorthand, and I'm going to put console, dot log and we'll say you may apply for the position else say console dot log and we'll say sorry you are not qualified for the position. Okay. So 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 since both of these are, are we set them to true by default, and we use the or logical operator, meaning at least one has to be true. Um, our code ran, and it did determine that the person was allowed to apply for the position. And you'll see this a lot if you're like applying for coding jobs. Um, you might see stuff. So there's HTML that we know about. And then there's also other HTMLs. One of them is called XHTML. It's like an older version. And some jobs might actually like require you that you know XHTML, which like not a lot of people do. But in most cases, like in real life, if you at least know regular HTML, the employer won't care and they'll still hire you. So this is actually like a really real life thing right here. <laughs> so yeah, you might have already seen that if you if you've tried applying for jobs, you might have seen like XHTML and different stuff. But um, and then just to test this, we could set one to false. And since we used or, again, it's still going to run true and we can still apply. Okay? All right, guys. So that's pretty much it for if-else statements and using Booleans and all that good stuff. Um, I just want to go over one more thing that we discussed kind of briefly in the beginning. And that was with our comparison op uh, operators and what kind of what we've been doing here with the triple equals. And I kind of mentioned in the beginning of the video that that was called strict mode. And I didn't really go too too much into like what strict equal signs is and why we want to use the strict mode as much as possible. And um, so what that basically means is when you use the triple equals in in an if else statement, it's gonna check um, if both data types that you're comparing are the same. And if they're not, it'll return false by default. If you only use like uh, if you use the triple op operator. Or tri sorry, triple equal sign operator. So this one, okay. And I'll give you some examples of that. So let's let's just say um, it's called strict and loose equality. So double equals is loose equality operator. It's called like loose being you're being loose with your code. So this would be loose. So we could say if one double equals so the loose loose equality operator not triple just double this time if one equals one so if one the number equals one the string console.log yes say yes they both equal one and look at that it actually even though that this is a string and this is a number and they both say one though like it's still it's saying since we only use the double equals so the loose equality loose code it actually went to true and it ran the console.log 
So if we ch try that same thing with the triple equals, so this time we'll say strict equality operator. And we'll try the same code. Let's say if one triple equals one the string console.log they are both oops they are both the same oh nothing nothing showed up here so let's give an else statement okay so let's say else and we'll say console.log and we'll say false they are different data types because they are one's a string one's a number so if we're going to use the triple lock uh we're going to compare two things with triple equals they better be the same data type else it's just going to be false and sure enough like if we ran the code here with our else and false they are different data types now watch what happens if i just remove these and i say if one is equal to one the number True, they are both the same. Same thing if I made them both strings. Look, they are both the same. Okay? So just understand that's how that's the strict that's called strict mode, strict code, strict uh equality operator. There's loose code. Um we're not gonna get too much into it other than that. Just know that by default you wanna be using triple equal sign in strict mode whenever you can. And then by the time you figure out the, the use case for using loose equality operators, you'll be way more advanced than me, and you won't even need my videos or me to teach you anything. <laughs> so that'll, that'll come with time. But for now, just stick with strict mode. You're pretty much never going to need to use loose, and you're not going to want to use the loose equality operators in most of your code, at least as a beginner, okay? So, yeah, guys, that's it for if else statements and booleans and all that good stuff. Um, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next video.